All right. So if you'd like to get time back in your business so you can focus on more important tasks or tasks that will move your growth forward and let someone else do some of the, uh, the clicking around stuff for you, uh, then you're definitely going to want to watch this episode or listen to this episode, depending on whether you're watching this on YouTube or listening on your favorite podcast app. So I'm excited to bring on Jalad Freeman from VAA Philippines. So Jalad, thanks for uh, joining us. Hey, Kevin. Thanks for having me. Yes. So um, you and I have been corresponding for a while. And I actually, just so everyone kind of knows, I just recently hired a VA through your company. So um, some, of, some of this is going to be... Uh, that is correct. I, I don't mean to make this sound like a commercial for your company or whatnot, <laughs> but it was a pretty organized process. So I kind of want to dig in a little bit deeper of the whole process of hiring a VA, which someone could probably use some of what we talk about here, whether they already have a virtual assistant to better manage them or, you know, go find their own, or if they want to, you know, hire a service like yours or whatever the case is. But yeah, sure. Let's just start from the beginning before all this. How did you get into this world? Well, I was a seller on Amazon. This is, this is okay. how it started. I, how did you get into on selling on Amazon? Yeah, I was, I was a ski instructor before. Okay. <laughs> if you want to talk about that. Let's do that. Um, what, what led yeah. you from being a ski instructor? <laughs> I uh, went, no, my, uh, my family, they're all, it's a family of ski instructors, you know, in, uh, oh, okay. in Mammoth, in California. And um, uh, even though I grew up in Israel, there was no, absolutely no snow in Israel. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I loved skiing and, uh, and hang out with my family where they ski. Uh, I became a ski instructor. I was working for a company and then I started working in the office instead of, you know, on the snow. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then when it, when pretty much I decided that this is not what I want to do, I want to start looking for, you know, to become my own boss, but like, like everybody's saying, and, uh, uh, and, and then Amazon, uh, you know, came up, it was 2015. Okay. Uh, I, I took a decision together with my wife to quit our jobs. We were both working in the same company of uh, ski. And uh, we both quit our jobs and started this uh, training course uh, in Israel about uh, selling uh, on Amazon. Um, and it was private label. Uh, and we started selling on Amazon. And we, uh, I remember we, we started uh, selling uh, camping equipment and it went great. I mean, we just took, it was 2015. So remember, you just take a picture with your phone and put it on. <laughs> and, and, it's so, and it sells, you know, by hundreds and, and it was great. And um and 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 it grew very fast. Uh, the business grew, and uh, and uh, we had to and uh, we had to hire. We had to understand. I mean, we understood that this is uh, this is the next step. And we hired a, a Filipino VA. I mean, I did a research, and and I I realized that the best you know to find is from the Philippines. So uh, I I hired a VA. I was uh, I put a lot of effort into that. I I, I interviewed I don't know like fifty different uh, people. I went over CVs of, of 300 uh, VAs and, uh, and in the end we picked the best, the best one, at least I, I thought so. And then I trained her on everything I knew about Amazon, uh, which took me about a month of, of training. Mm -hmm. And then she, wor she started working for us, which was great for about three weeks. <laughs> and, and, and then she just disappeared. She she mm. really dissipated. I mean, there was like no contact at all, no no response. Just, no, just you know, you know. stops yeah. contacting. Stop. You. Yeah, I have no idea what I, I I tried later on and I couldn't find her and that, and that's it. And then you're you're at the point that everything crashes because you understand that you have to start all over again. The month of training is all you know gone, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and you have and you have to start. You're using the same information that you got from the last uh interviews but then most of the people that you you, you, you say okay i'll hire and uh, you know number two uh, but then number two is no longer available number three doesn't want to work with you and, and, and you know so things started to go you have to start all over again basically and um and it happened not exactly the same that the second va that we recruited uh, stayed with us for about three three months or so uh, but after three months, it started, you know, with the excuses, uh, uh, sickness, uh, family urgencies, uh, uh, weather conditions. And, and the more it got into, I, I just realized that she's not into this type of work. And uh, I, I understood that I did. Something went wrong in this recruitment process because, you know, it, it happens quite a lot. And I asked other people and they say to me, yeah, this is, it happens all the time in the Philippines. And, and I couldn't accept that. Mm -hmm. I, I, I understood that there must be a way to find good VAs from the beginning, you know, to do a different recruitment process 
uh, and uh, and uh, there must be a, a better way to find them work with them make them stay with you instead of you know disappear after a while uh, and 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 train them uh, so this is actually how it started it, it was from our own uh, mistakes yeah so for people that haven't hired in the Philippines before it can be challenging now just as a a side note the person who's listening to this and editing this podcast right now. <laughs> <laughs> feel free to leave this part in uh, but basically she uh, she and I've been working together for about four years so uh, but it can be hard finding that and I went through some of the same pain points too of like trying to like okay you kind of got to ask some questions like okay what would you do if you weren't happy about something I told you or something like that because there is kind of a, a, a a belief out there whether it's true or not and i i had it happen with people that i had hired through a agency in the before maybe like four and a half years ago where all of a sudden everything is great and then i just can't work anymore like why so, something came up and people would say oh yeah that, that happens all the time in the philippines and it's like but does it have to and so to the point of like the person who's editing this podcast has been uh, working with me for over four years now and i've got you know other people that i've gotten to find to be pretty loyal so it can be a pain point of like if you're not used to hiring people especially understanding certain cultures and kind of how you find how you pick out the wheat from the chaff so to speak so what what would you recommend to someone to do to make sure that they're hiring someone who's not just going to ghost them or, you know, go through training and all of a sudden they're gone. Uh, it's it's a good question because it, it it takes a lot of patience in in various different levels. I mean, it starts at the at the recruitment. A lot of people think, okay, I'm I'm just going to go over CVs and and find the one who has the best experience or that mm. that looks the best in in the in in, in what they explain about themselves or how they react in the first interview. But, you know, from my experience, the first interview does not really tell you a lot about that person, except for how they, if they know if they're good or not in, in first interviews. Right. And that's, right, right. And that's, that's what it tells you. And also that then whatever they write about in, about their experience and, the, and their previous jobs, a lot of times it's exaggerated and, and you cannot really tell mm -hmm. who is the person behind that. It, it takes time. So, I mean, for us, for example, at VA, it takes us about two months until we're done with the recruitment process, until we are absolutely sure that the VAs that we uh, hire, they uh, they match the description that we're looking for. And and it was easier if I could just give them a test to see how much they score in a, uh, about Amazon, or, you know, if I could just, you know, ask them, you know, a few questions and give them a task and, and see how they are. But a, a part of it is to be patient enough to see how they communicate and how they react to certain situations over time and if they are accurate and if they continue to be accurate over time and and if they're all, if they show up on time if they're eager to learn more and advance and if they put the time uh, to answer a good question uh, you know so it, it takes time to to just to find the right people and so that would be my first advice do not sell for you know saying okay i'm just gonna do you know go over uh, the CVs and find the best one and 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 pick the from the first interview. It takes it takes more than that. Um, the second uh, tip would be after working with somebody, after you hire the the right person. Um, I think my biggest mistake was that I looked at it as you know I have a freelancer working from the other side of the world and I um it's it's all about tasks. You know I'll 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 define exactly what I want the VA to be helping me with. And then she's going to do it. And, you know, we'll, cor we'll correspond just according to the tasks. And, and that's it. You know, she can work daytime. I can work my daytime. So it's, it's completely different. We don't need, even need to meet. And then I'll just see if things are done and, and that's it. But that's the way that for me, at least, and for many uh, others, that's the way that you're going to, your VA is going to leave because she's not going to feel con committed to your company, to your brand. And uh, she's going to feel like exactly like you feel that, that it's all about tasks. You know, so mm -hmm. if, if it's not personal, if she's not really feeling like a part of your company, if she doesn't see her future in there and, and she doesn't see that you believe in her, then, you know, she has nothing to lose by looking other ways and, and find better jobs. So uh, um, the, the best thing that I, I've learned that, about this uh, process is that once you hire somebody, you got to make sure, you know, once trust is 
uh, is founded and, and you're already and you know that this is the person you want to work with, make her know that, you know, make her uh, understand that she's a crucial part of your business. Talk to her about, you know, your expectations and, and what you feel, uh, what you want to give her in the next years. There's no problem, I think, you know, to, to discuss about rates and, 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 uh, uh, and, you know, giving her raises and, and, and bonuses and, and decide that I want you to become manager later on. And, there's you don't people are a bit afraid of saying things you know that maybe after that i will have to commit to what i said but you know it's it's good that you commit mm -hmm. because you know the va will know you know that she's not here for you know she could be here today and tomorrow she's gone because you don't need her anymore and that what what makes people uh, uh stay with you um um that's these are the two tips i think that you know from the top of my head are important okay good good and one of the things I've been thinking about a lot this year is just, you know, getting more tasks off my own plate. In fact, mm -hmm. I'm uh, currently listening to Scale by Jeff Hoffman, who's the founder of Priceline.com, mm -hmm. David Finkel. The book, I think, is actually a few years old, so I don't think it's a, a brand new book. Some of their examples are a little dated, um, which is, but everything so far in is pretty good. And a lot of it is, you know, having teams and, you know, developing folks and whatnot. Now, myself included, a lot of Amazon sellers have challenges with uh, letting go of tasks because no one can do it as good as I do. And at yeah. the same time too, a lot of people, myself included at times, um, been on both ends of the spectrum where it's, uh, oh, just, just do it. You know, like you just kind of like let it go and not, maybe not necessarily have the right follow-up process. Um, yeah. for measuring success or whatnot. So what, what is the right way to figure out what you need done and determining what is like what and how you delegate that? And maybe that's, maybe that's multiple questions that we can unpack. Yeah. So let's start with, with the basics. I, I always ask myself uh, a, a very, uh, you know, basic question, which is, mm -hmm. is the thing that I'm doing now uh, is it absolutely necessary that I'm the only person that can do it? Mm. Uh, and, and if the question, if the answer is yes, for example, only me as the founder of VA can take that decision or can understand where I want to go with this, mm -hmm. then I should you know, still stick with it and, and do this task. If the answer is, well, but actually no, somebody else with the right training, with the right attitude, you know, and not a, a Superman VA could do it for me, then I have to find that Superman VA to do it. But uh, uh, it, it means that somebody else can do it. So, uh, and, and once you realize that, then it's, it's just, you know, it's a yes, no question. And, and then it's much easier to delegate. Otherwise, uh, you're right, because in e-commerce, not just on Amazon, but in, on e-commerce in general, it's so easy for us to think that we, we have to do everything because it's mm -hmm. just, you know, it's, it's there. We're trained on it. We know how to do it. Uh, you know, e-commerce uh, entrepreneurs today, they know a lot about about everything on on their business you know they, yeah. they can handle customer support and they can do the shipment plans and they can find their products and they can negotiate with the supplier and they can uh, uh, you know even do graphic designings and and, and post on facebook they, they it's it's all there it's all in front of your computer mm -hmm. so uh, it's something that did not exist you know years ago uh, uh, offline uh, you know you would not imagine somebody opening a restaurant and thinking by mistake that he could do both you know prepare the food and serve it you know, it's, it's, it was mm. obvious that, you know, if you want to open a restaurant that you're going to hire from the very beginning, before even the first customer comes in, you have to hire a chef, you have to hire, you know, the uh, servers and you have to, you know, it's all, there, there right. is a team that you have to uh, hire before the first buck came in. And, and it's something that we do not see anymore uh, when e-commerce uh, is involved, but uh, we know it now that e-commerce is, is a business, like a business is a business. And, mm -hmm. and you have to think about it the same way. You have to decide from the very beginning that you're going to delegate tasks if you want to grow. And you have to understand that this is a part of your expenses. Uh, and you have to understand that uh, not, you, do, you do not need to do everything yourself. That's, um, so it all starts there. Once you decide that you want to delegate, then yes, the, the, the tricky question is how you do it. And um, uh, uh, there should always be SOPs. There should always be you know, uh, uh, ways the, to do a test you, ju you don't just give it to your va and say okay i did it until now take it from me <laughs> right and 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 good luck uh, because otherwise she would do plenty of mistakes um he or she 
the the easiest way to do it is is by creating SOPs, uh, standard operation uh, operating procedures, and um, and it should not be done by uh, the entrepreneur or the the seller. I would want. I mean, personally, I I, I ask all my VAs to create the SOPs for uh, the company. Uh, they create it. Uh, so I could check it and see that they, they fully understood everything. Uh, first of all, it, it will save me some time. I do not want them to do something, so I have to start writing SOPs. I want them to write it. Uh, and uh, what we usually do is that uh, we create a, a video tutorial. I'm, I, uh, I share my screen, and then I show the VA what I want to be done. Uh, and, uh, and it's recorded at the same time. Uh, so I, I, and I can do it even without the VA, the VA can watch it later. So I can do it whenever it's comfortable for me, mm -hmm. but I'll just, you know, record the actions that I'm, I want uh, uh, to be done. I do it myself and I talk about it and I talk about possible options and I show it and everything is recorded. Now, after that, the VA has to watch this video and then she could take her time and, and watch it again and again, and again, and, and create a, a, a very detailed SOP with exactly the instructions of how uh, uh, things should be done, including all the remarks and things that I said uh, in the recording. So then you could just read the SOP and you could easily see if the VA understood everything or not. And you could catch some problems or things that, you know, you see, hmm, good question here. I, I did not talk about it. And, and then, you know, it's, it's another way for you to improve the SOP. And, and that's the best way. And after that, you know, the VA is doing it for you. You're absolutely sure that you got it right and you still have the video you know to train other vas when when they join in the the, the company so i i think you should always have uh wikis or uh, you know sops uh, uh prepared and uh, and you should follow them and uh, and the vas they should know how to create them and how and how to follow them got it so always make sure that there's some sort of <clears throat> you know sop you know especially for it's if a, a task that's repetitive and ongoing and just to go back to something you said earlier about, you know, it's kind of like the e-commerce entrepreneur, we start out where we have to do everything. You know, we're trying to yeah. figure out like, how do I even turn the lights on, so to speak, uh, which there's generally not turning the lights on, but like we have <laughs> to like listen to podcasts or, you know, watch YouTube videos or blog posts or take a course or something to learn all this. And so we, we end up learning everything, but to your point, like whether it's a restaurant or, you know, any other kind of business, there gets a point where like, if you want to grow, you have to hire more staff. You know, if the restaurant can't just have the, the owner cook the food and wait on the tables, maybe every now and then if it's super slow, but <laughs> you know, chances are, if it's a dinner rush on a Saturday night, it's not, yeah. You don't see the, the server say, I'm the only person here. I know there's like 200 people in the building right now, but I got to run in the back and flip the burgers real quick I'll be yeah. right back to get your drink order. You know, they, 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 they assign things out and they have processes for that. Yeah. And, and think you, about the risk. Think oh, about yeah. the risk that, you know, that the, an, an, an owner of a restaurant would take and it would be so obvious for him or her to, to take that risk, you know, to, you know, to rent. The, the entire area of the restaurant to mm -hmm. prepay in advance for all these salaries and, oh, yeah. and, 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 you know, and, and invest in promotion and advertisement before the first, you know, client came in. Mm -hmm. So it was, it's, it's so obvious for, to us in the old world. And, and because exactly what you said, because we learn it all mm -hmm. from scratch on, on how to do it, then we think, okay, they taught me how to do it. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's my, it's my job to do it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So we just think this is my job to do, but you talk to anyone who's at any level of scale and they've all have stories of at a certain point, I get to a point I couldn't do anymore because you get to a point where a yes to one thing becomes a no to something else. Mm -hmm. And that yes to something that maybe it's easy, it'll just take five minutes, but that's a no to something else that maybe going back to like the uh, seven habits of highly effective people with Stephen Covey, where he talks about like urgent, non-urgent, important, not important. You know, there's a lot of things that are important, but not urgent, but that could be your long-term growth is focusing on the important, but not urgent. But if you're focusing all on urgent things, maybe it's things you should delegate out or do 
need to let it happen or does it even need to be done? And if it's something that needs to be done, which there are a lot of just little tasks you start finding, you got to do, or you just got to check on this, pull this report, check on this. Yeah. Five minutes here, five minutes there, but you start adding it up. Even if you hire someone else, it takes them 20 minutes and they do it, which would have taken you five and they do it 75% as well as you would have. Is that still worth the time back and the mindset of investing in yourself and investing in the important but not so urgent things that are really going to be the things long term they're going to move the ball forward? Uh, definitely, and and uh, you know there is a, even a name for it. They they call it the the Superman uh, syndrome. Yeah, because uh, because because you 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 are so you're doing everything yourself. And, mm-hmm. and and like you said, you know, uh, a yes to one uh, leads to no to another, but it also becoming tiring. You you are there and you're doing everything. So which which could be really cool in the beginning to answer all customer service, you know, questions because yeah. who else can answer the questions if not me? I'm mm-hmm. the owner of the company. I know exactly what to say to them. And and you know, I tried this VA and, and she didn't respond exactly like myself. So I I, I cannot give it to anybody else. But uh, after answering two hundred or three hundred or three thousand messages like this <clears throat> it's becoming tiring and then you you reach to a point that you hope that nobody writes to you anymore because <laughs> right. you know you hope on oh, no another another uh, uh, message and uh, a negative message i have to find that person and communicate instead of seeing the opportunity of communicating with people mm-hmm. which is a great opportunity i i have i've had so many cases that you know a negative feedback led to a positive a five-star review but because I took yes. it as an opportunity and, and I came in and then, you know, you ship them a free product, you understand what it's, where the, the problem is coming from. You correct the problem, uh, which is the biggest advantage. You know, you understand what went wrong and how you correct it. And then you, it leads to a five-star review. And it's all because, uh, you know, somebody else was doing it for me. Uh, otherwise, I would see it as a hassle. You know, now I have to, you know, it, it wastes so much time and energy. So I, I prefer not to do it. Um, and and that's the most that's the scary part that you are in a position that after two years usually of of doing things yourself you're becoming to a point of exhaustion because you you realize that you know you cannot do anything you cannot do everything and then you focus only on urgency. Yeah, exactly. It's kind <laughs> of like if you were a farmer and you know you just kept having more and more tasks around your farm that you're like, I'll just do it myself. I'll just do it myself. But then you never had time to get around to plant more seeds. And so when you go to like, you know, pull the crops, I have no crops because I didn't put the seeds out because I was too busy focusing on urgent things like putting out water for the cows or something like that, which might be a horrible analogy. But, you know, but another way to look at it too is like Jeff Bezos, for example, you know, I think we've all seen that famous picture where he's like, on like basically what looks like a card table or something with like an old CRT monitor. And there's all these like cords and literally it looks spray painted amazon.com on the wall. (laughs) Yeah. It's like, and he built something and you know, he tells this story and he's told it a few times of like how in the beginning, um, the people, when they got really busy, he would pull everyone in the office to help fulfill orders and they would be like sitting on the floor boxing stuff up. He's like, and after a while, you know, when you're like kneeling on the floor, your your knees would get um, tired and they might hurt a little bit. So he goes, what I started doing was saying, hey, why don't we order knee pads? That would help us. And they're like, why don't we get tables? And he's like, oh, that's a great idea. And look how far they've come from, you know, <laughs> not thinking about buying tables. But, you know, right. you could be looking as the person listening, you could be looking back at your business and laughing at how you're doing it now, but what seemed safe at the time to order knee pads and have a spray painted sign <laughs> eventually could lead you to great things down the road. Cause imagine if he had set, stayed in that mindset of like, I'll just knee pads. I will. Oh, and if you read the book, oh, what, what's the book? There's some book that came out fairly recently written by two, like fairly early on executives at Amazon. And they talk about how originally he was reading every customer service email. Imagine if he was never able to get out of that mode where he felt yeah. like he could only be the only person to do it. No, he set up the system and he moved on and leveled up and leveled up and leveled up. And now he's done pretty well for himself and the company's done well. And so imagine if he had stayed in that mode 
it would be a whole different company. We wouldn't be here talking about this stuff had he not gotten out of that. And so not only would his life be different, but our lives would be different. Completely. And, and you know, and you see that there are actually different types of tasks that you can give to your VA. The first ones, the, the very first thing that you could give your VA is what we talk now is, is the urgent matters. You know, mm. the things that if you would not delegate, you know, if you would not do, if, then, you know, the business would not exist. If somebody is uh, sending you a message on Amazon, you, you know that you have 24 hours to respond. So without mm -hmm. having either you or your VA responding, then you're in trouble. So that's the urgent matters that, you know, you, you have to take action and, mm -hmm. and, and do something about it. The same if you get a negative review, you know, you have to, you know, to do something about it. You cannot just wait and see what happens to the sales. Mm -hmm. so, um, so these are the urgent matters. That's for sure you need to go to give your VA so you could have more time to yourself. The, the next level will be to start, you know, giving tasks to things that you're not doing at the moment because you don't have time to, mm. but you want to, you would want to see your, you know, to have an active Facebook page, for example, and, and post every, every second day about your brand, about your, uh, uh, you know, the environment, the people, the, the products, you would want to see that, but mm -hmm. you don't get there because, you know, you, you're stuck in urgency. So, mm -hmm. um, but, but that's the next step, you know, so, so now your VA could do both. She could do also the, the, the everyday, you know, tasks that or without he. them, the business, he or she, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. stuck with it. Though. Okay. But, uh, you could, you, you know, that the VA could do either uh, all the urgent matters that repeats themselves every day, but also the things that you would want uh, uh, to start doing on a regular basis, but you'd never had the time. And now you should take that time and 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 go to the next step of your business which means to learn more learn how to manage learn how to uh, you know there is always this uh, webinar that you wanted to uh, uh, to watch and uh, mm -hmm. this uh, uh, training that you wanted to take but you thought okay when when i'll have the time i'll do it but you never got there so mm -hmm. this is the right time this is that's the best reason to to have vas and and for me that was the the biggest opportunity of growth uh, both for my Amazon business, but also for VA. So you could, you could, you know, take some time off and use it to grow your business, to learn how to grow your business, to look at it from above and, and, and see where you want your business to be in a year from now, in five years from mm -hmm. now. And, and with doing everything yourself, you would just not never get there. Yeah. And another thing you can do is level up again and give your VA something to learn to have them take a course of some sort or, you know, Hey, watch these videos about X, Y, Z topic and report back to me. And so yeah. maybe they spend three minutes reporting back to you and what they learned as opposed to you watching them for 45 <laughs> minutes or whatever the case De is. Definitely. Definitely. This is something that I, I, uh, I uh, tend to give to my existing VAs and not to a new VA that I just right. hired. Uh, I want to see that they that I can trust their uh, way of work, that they, they know how to do, uh, to learn new things, complicated things and apply them, uh, you know, without mistakes. And, and once I feel comfortable that they know how to learn new topics, then mm -hmm. definitely I will give it that to, uh, and I do it all the time. I, I send VAs to learn uh, new uh, topics uh, almost on, on daily basis and, and report to me and summarize for me uh, uh, trainings and entire, entire procedures. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Cool. Um, all right. So now, now we've talked a little bit about, you know, selecting, you know, the right VA, um, you know, eventually you start learning the questions to ask, you know, one thing I've, let's actually go back to the selection process a little bit. One of the things I learned was the first time I posted on onlinejobs.ph, which is a pretty common place to hire people. If you're going to hire on your own is, um, you know, I'm in the East Coast of the U.S., so I'm pretty much the exact opposite schedule of the Philippines. And so, like, they're 12, 12 to 13 hours. 12 hours. Of, yeah, depending on the, 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 whether it's daylight savings times here right. or not. And so, the first time I hired someone, like, posting it myself, I just, here's the posting, blah, 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 blah. And then I woke up the next morning. I did this right before I went to bed. Woke up the next morning. There was like 160 applicants or something like that. And I was like, am I going to go yeah. through all these? And so yeah, I was like, no. all right, let's just delete this posting. <laughs> and one of the things I yeah. did 
which scared away a bunch of people is I, I had them jump through some hoops and one of them, which is, sounds very basic, but feel free to steal this. Um, I basically said, put the first and last name of the second president of the United States in the subject mm-hmm. line yeah. of your message. Yeah. And what does that do? One, most Americans would have to look that up because they'd be like, is it Thomas Jefferson? Is it Madison? <laughs> but if it's a black and white answer and it's easy to find if you search for it, it's John Adams. So if I didn't see John Adams is the start of the subject line, mm-hmm. I threw it out. And I ended up with fewer people signing up. And those that did were people who at least take the initiative to look that up. Because if you can't look up that simple of a thing, you're probably not um, the right person. So are there other things you think would be good to make sure you have the right person? And you don't have to go too deep in the weeds on this, but just some basic tips. Yeah, but first of all, the, what you said is is definitely a, a good idea, and it's a, it's a way to you know el- eliminate so much you know like at least like twenty thirty percent of you know of the mm-hmm. of the applicants, which is like you said, it's you get three, you wake up in the morning, you have three hundred uh, applicants, so right. you know, so it, it is it is important. We we uh, uh, we do very similar things uh, related to Amazon, and we want to send them to Amazon to check a few mm-hmm. pricing and and see their uh, their ability to. To, to find them the answer themselves and, and then and put it uh, uh, there so that that would be your first step exactly uh, you would not believe how many VAs they just copy paste their their you know entire uh, curriculum vita and and they just you know they 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 send it to hundreds of thousands of, of people and I would want to to know that the person that applied to my company is somebody that you know first of all they know that they applied <laughs> to my mm-hmm. company and not just applied to thousands of uh, more and they really thought that what I have to offer uh, is is what they're looking for and and you know that's the, that's the only way for you to really secure and, and be sure that you know the person actually read your instructions mm-hmm. and was also able to follow instructions you mm-hmm. know so it's it, it, what I also do is that you know, there there is the, you get you get the, the example of online jobs so uh, if they respond uh, to your uh, uh, post on inside online jobs, then it will go to a certain uh, uh, email that's connected to your account. But if you post inside the ad, you say, "Okay, any uh, your answer, please send it to the, the following email." Ah, okay? okay. So that would mean that they would not just need you know to read; they would have to follow instructions. They would have to read it all and understand that they have to actually not just push reply, mm-hmm. but you know send it to a different email, recruiting mm. at VAA. And 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 then you see that this is somebody that read, followed your instructions, did the research, and got the right answer, and and sent it to the right email. So it's already somebody do, that you know do takes this that takes this more serious than all the others that didn't. You know, so it's already the first step. Uh, what we do is we continue after uh, the next step for us would be before an interview, before anything, it, it would be. Um, uh, to check uh, technical issues, you know, for example, like the speed of their computer, the, you know, how fast is their computer? Do a speed test and, and send it to you. Uh, uh, what like type a speed of test computer? on the internet? Yeah. Oh, okay. Got yeah, it. yeah. Uh, and and uh, uh, speed test in, in in the internet, checking their computer, which computer they have, what what the core and the and and the speed and, and all that. Uh, if they have a quiet environment to work from, because they're working from home. Uh, and uh, and and some technical issues about you know the hours that they can work uh, if they uh, and uh, and and other uh, issues you know if that we should know about before before even going to the next step. Uh, a lot of people you would see them in the interview talking in an office, but they just went there for the interview. But after that, they're actually intending to work from home, which has a completely different computer, completely different internet connection, and you know you'd hear chickens and and and, and uh, dogs, you know, barking barking in mm-hmm. the background. So you you have to be aware of it. Uh, sometimes it's not a problem because you're they're not going to be talking on the phone with people. So I don't mind if they have chickens <laughs> in the background, but you know you should you should know that <laughs> you mm-hmm. know because things are not like like they uh, they shown on the interview. And um, then the step after would be uh, an additional task, but this is a task which is more complicated. And we want to see that they, uh, it's usually like a video that uh, uh, you would explain them how to do a task that you would usually want them to do on a regular basis. Uh, you would explain the task on, on the on the video, and then you would want them to, to do the task. 
so it would take them, you know, uh, like half an hour to do the test, to, to see the video uh, uh, in its full understanding what they, are, they need to do and put some effort into doing the test themselves. And then you could, uh, first of all, see that they watch the video and also that you can really see them at work. It's not like a typical, uh, it's really like to see that they dedicated some time and did, you know, they put some effort into doing a full answer. They use their creativity. For example, you know, if um, you give them to watch, uh, to look at the list, uh, at a certain listing mm -hmm. and, and go over the reviews over there and tell them, okay, find the, the, the most repeating uh, uh, two negative uh, reviews. What are the, what they are they talking about? You send it to a specific uh, uh, listing so you'd know already in advance what are the most common uh, uh, things that people uh, complain about, okay? And you'd ask them, okay, go over the, the reviews and, and tell me what are the most repeating uh, uh, two problems that, that people complain about and how would you do in, in order to improve it? What would you do in order to, you know, change in the product, communicate mm. with your supplier? What would you do in order to correct this? Uh, and then you can see already how they think and, and how they communicate and how they uh, can explain themselves in, in writing. So it's already a very good way for you before an interview, before even talking to them, you know, just, you know, just to see if they follow instructions, if they have a good way uh, in English to explain themselves, sure. if they have good internet connection, all that before the interview. So it's already a very good way to start eliminating, uh, you know, candidates that are not, you know, the right pick for you. And after that, you know, like, like I said, it's, we, it takes us two months to, to filter them. So we have more steps <laughs> to follow. Right, 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 but, right, right. But yeah, it, it's, it's another tip. Okay, that's interesting. Now, <clears throat> let's go back to now we have them with us. So we talked a little bit about, yeah. you know, picking out the tasks, having the mentality of you don't want to just focus on urgent all day long. Eventually, you got to let stuff go and give it to someone else. We talked a little bit about, you know, how you can delegate things, have SOPs created and do screen shares. Um, the other part I think a lot of people struggle with, and this isn't just, you know, Amazon sellers, the corporations have multiple layers of management because we're all bad at doing things sometimes if we don't feel like we're being watched. I hate to say <laughs> it that way. Mm -hmm. Um well, I mean, Amazon does it to Amazon sellers. I mean, think of all the metrics we're being, you know, judged on basically. And so yeah. there's all these things that, as Peter Drucker would say, what gets measured gets managed. So how do you manage success with your VA to know that stuff is getting done without being micromanaging or overdoing it, but at the same time too, not underdoing it? So uh, also a good question because the, um, I, I, I hate to use uh, um, monitoring devices, you know, in order to be the big brother and, and just right. watch over their, uh, their shoulder. It exists. People should know that, you know, if you go on uh, Time Doctor or HubStuff, you know, there, there are all these uh, uh, tools that will allow you to be the big brother and to get screenshots screenshot and seconds, videos. And, yeah. and it goes, it goes way beyond. I mean, you can see where if they're talking from their home, you know, from their uh, GPS uh, uh, position, or if they're oh, wow. talking from a coffee shop, if you can see percentage of the mouse, you know, the movement of the mouse and the, the keyboard. So for example, if I'm working with you, if I'm, if I'm working now, then usually you would see like a movement in with the mouse and, and the keyboard of about like 50%. Of the time, so you're not expected to type, you know, a 100 percent right because they might be reading something, <laughs> yeah, or reading or something. thinking, or you know, right. <laughs> they might get yeah. up and go to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, but if it goes down to like, let's like say, five percent, you know, for uh, half an hour, then you just say, hmm, something is wrong here, and you have ways that you know to get an alert every time that you know this percentage goes beyond a certain you know uh, limit that you decided. But I, I, you know, so you could you could know everything. In, in, in what's, what's going on with your VA, but I would definitely want my VAs to work uh, according to targets uh, and, yeah. uh, and set KPIs and understand exactly like uh, what they're expected to do and, and then have uh, uh, daily reports uh, of what they did. This is a very important. I, um, I really think that getting a report from your VA on a daily basis is uh, is uh, super important. I mean, uh, uh, in the report, it's up to you to decide what you want to get from your VA. So, but it's important that the VA will know that in the end of each shift, they should describe to you, first of all, what they did, uh, even though they have their schedule, which is also a very uh, important thing. You know, you have somebody working for you, create a schedule for them, you know, that they would know, even if you're not there, what they should be working on. 
and, mm-hmm. and you know so they know that on my, you know every day the first they spend the first hour answering to questions and and, and problems with the uh, customers the second hour they they every day they have something different to do so they have their schedule but mm-hmm. after that even without it you know so they they report to you what they did they report to you about any problems that they encountered and and how they solved them uh, and they uh, will report also to you if uh, if there is anything that you could help them with uh, and that's that's uh, uh, i think is a good uh, uh, question that i would not uh, let go uh, because i want to hear from my vas all the time you know if they if they if there's something that i can help them with and um uh, because if i would not ask this question a lot of time they would not say anything until it's too late so i want to hear it from them i want to hear that uh, you know if this is what their problem and and if i could you know, get them, uh, you know, a course or a training or uh, additional knowledge or, or something, then it, it will be solved like that. Otherwise, they would feel maybe embarrassed. There is a, a culture difference between us and the Philippines, so we have to be aware of it. Um, so setting up goals and targets uh, on, on, on weekly and monthly basis uh, are, are super important. It depends on what your VA is doing for you, uh, but uh, uh, each one can, can think of the things that they, they want to see improved. And, and go over them and get reports uh, on on daily basis and once in a month go over some some of the goals and see where we are and how we can improve and it's okay to understand that in the beginning your VA would not get you know to 100% on day 1 it takes them time to understand how you do things how you work and and uh, but you want to see the graph going up and and that's something that you can see by setting up goals and and targets and and checking them uh, every week or every month I like that to make it more about goals and targets and mm-hmm. objectives that are actually going to move forward than just activity. Because yeah. if you optimize for activity, you're going to get activity. And, yeah. you know, hopefully people wouldn't do this, but there are software systems I've heard that can make mouse movements and make yeah. keyboard <laughs> strokes. Right. So, you know, that can be doctored and, or if they're just doing it honestly, maybe they just sit there and they just start clicking around and they add extra clicks to tasks that maybe take three yeah. clicks they make into six. That's just yeah, simply not, not the right way to work. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So you, you start optimizing for the wrong thing. So if yes. you want to optimize for the things that aren't just check box, but check box for a purpose, like that you're trying to you know, get, you know, higher customer service scores, which I guess in the Amazon world would be like, you know, reviews or something like that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, or higher, faster response times to customers. So if your average response time goes from 26 hours, which might get you into trouble because Amazon wants it (laughs) under 24, but if you get it back down to like eight or something like that on average, because they can't do it 24 hours a day. But, you know, those type of things. So if, if you're yeah. optimizing for measurable goals that get you the right thing, it's kind of like the whole thing with SMART goals. You know, if you're familiar with SMART, uh, mm-hmm. specific, measurable, actionable, realistic, and time-bound, you got to be careful of how SMART you make it because then there would get to be like the analogy of, you know, you make it so much that like, oh, okay, uh, we're going to uh, staple it on the left hand side of the paper, you know, at a 45 degree angle. Like, but does that matter? You know, we're, or yeah. should they be focusing on something else? Because if you get too much focus on the wrong details, um, you, you can end up with, as we used to say at a former job of mine, sometimes you're stepping over a dollar to get to a nickel. <laughs> You're focusing on the wrong mm-hmm. things. Like they're not things that are going to move the ball forward or really make your life any simpler. They're just activity. Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 definitely. And uh, and and I think also here, patience is a crucial. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. uh, it, you would not get to your final goals uh, in, in a day. You would mm-hmm. need to understand that if your goal is to get, you know, uh, I don't know, twenty messages uh, a day answered. Uh, you know, especially for somebody doing FBM, not FBA. Yeah. But uh, yeah, then if that's your goal, you would not set that goal for week one. You know, for week right. one, you would, you would have fifty percent of it or, or or less, and then you'd see, you know, how you could advance. You say, okay, for next week, I would want to see an improvement of ten percent, 
and and then you you see how fast your VA can get there. You can raise it up a little bit or or not, but it's mm-hmm. you, can, you you need the patience to get there. You know that eventually you need to get there, but it, it's not happen overnight. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It, it's Rome wasn't built in a day. Your mm-hmm. new business isn't going to be built in a day. We take for granted sometimes all the things we've learned along the way of, um, you know, I learned how to do this task and I did, I struggled in the beginning, then I get better, then I get better, then I get better. And then someone else has to go through the same thing. And they probably haven't had the same level of interest of before they get started, they listen to podcasts for six months, you know, right. yeah. to, to learn things. It's, it's not their business. It's your right. business. Exactly. So. Exactly. So you know, you got to give them a little bit of grace there. Just as if you've ever had a job, you know, when I first started at McDonald's when I was 15 mm-hmm. years old, I didn't have the same level of enthusiasm and excitement of maybe the manager there. And maybe something you want to one day um, strive to was, I remember the owner was back there one time and he had like eight franchises or something like that. Like he had multiple stores. He'd been with McDonald's for like 30 years or something like that. You know, this is even in the nineties. And so he was, he was a fairly early on franchisee. And I remember he went back there and he's like, how do I make a milkshake? I'm like, literally you just take the cup and you go like this, you just pull the, the lever down and it just comes out. And he had no idea. And I remember being like, well, how, how come he doesn't know? Like, dude, he's the owner. He doesn't need to. And so going back to the whole thing of like, maybe in the beginning, he knew intimately how the milkshake machine worked. But then over time, he hired people to worry about the milkshake machine. And so what are the milkshake machines in your business that you want to get to a point where all you need to know is, are customers happy with the milkshake machine? Or maybe the milkshake machine is more of a process. But, you know, there's things that are they getting you your goal, your result you want? And maybe you don't need to know every minutia detail of it because you've now developed a team of people and you have people training other people for you. And so you just need to know that it achieves the outcome you want. You don't necessarily need to know intimately every single step. And that's maybe leveling up to a new detail, but something to strive for long-term. I'm starting no. to think more about. Yeah, completely agree. And uh, and and also it's, it's the same with the work of the VA. You should, uh, um, a lot of time you, you think, okay, I, I tested the VA and, and, and she's, he or she yeah. is great at uh, uh, A, B, and C, but, you know, there is a small problem over there that, you know, she could not do it uh, perfectly on, and that's not, that's not for me. That's not the, the, the VA for my, for my team. I need somebody who's perfect in everything. And, and, and the way to see it is that, you know, you look at, at your goals and you look mm-hmm. what you want and you say, okay, this is something trainable. This is something that I can train her. Or somebody else can train her, and and uh, and 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 uh, Rome was not built in a day, like you said. So yeah. it, it's something that uh, I should not ask for perfection on day one, and and you should look at the big picture and see where you want to be. The most important for you is that you don't do it anymore, and somebody else do it. And if you have the patience and you know what to train the VA and you see the potential, then uh, then somebody else can do it for you, and then uh, uh, little by little you'll find yourself. You know, worrying about the milkshake uh, and not, you know, how to how to operate it. Uh, but you know, this is why you need the manpower and the and the help of team uh, of a team inside your business to take care of it, to know how to operate it. Exactly, exactly. Develop the team and the systems and whatnot. And you know, Jeff Bezos probably has no idea how to send inventory into Amazon. He has no mm-hmm. idea how to check it in. He has no idea how to fulfill an order anymore. If he wouldn't even probably know how to go and respond to a customer, but he doesn't need to, <laughs> you know, he's mm-hmm. yeah. developed this system over time. And I think we have to have the mindset of a business owner or maybe challenge yourself. Are you building a business or a job? And so this can become a job. And the problem is it can be scary where eventually you get to a point where there's so many tasks. And if you're the only one doing all the tasks, you're going to get to a point where you don't have the time to do things that you should be focusing on because you're doing a bunch of things that probably need to be done, but they don't necessarily need to be done by you. You know what? Not just, not just that. Even, you know, when, when you think about all the aggregators that, you know, that are buying 
companies mm. these days. And and imagine that you you developed a company, a, a business who is entirely based on you. Now it's nice that you want to sell your business, but you know what's your business without you? Is it going to mm. be still working and manufacturing, you know, and and keeping the same level because you have all your VAs ready and you have a team of people uh, that knows how to do shipments and inventory and 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 creating listings and everything without you? And your job was to manage, or it's entirely up to you. So if you step aside, then you know the entire business will will fall because nobody can do things like yourself. So uh, even to a point of how worth your business is. Uh, it, it's it's a good question to think of, you know, creating a team already and delegating. Otherwise, you know, this entire dream of of selling your business and starting a new one would not be the same. Got it. So for someone who wanted to start outsourcing, but they wanted to outsource the process of outsourcing, so to speak, basically <laughs> hire someone else to do the hiring for them. Um, what are some things to think about? Well, if you, if you want to uh, 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 hire VAs, um, you know, if you want to hire a, a company that will uh, uh, that will find VAs for you, that uh, like what which which company would it be? Is that is that the question that you're? Well, asking? okay. What are some things to think about if you're like if you're going to go to a, a company and say, "Hey, hire me a VA," mm -hmm. what would I want to think about before I say this is like? What is the person well, doing? First of what, all, what, what would I look for in that company? What would I ask? What's your focus? For, first of all, I mean, our focus, for example, is Amazon. So we can say straight and mm. to the point, I mean, if you're selling on, on eBay or, or you know, on, on uh, uh, Etsy, then, you know, our VAs are not, are not necessarily for you. Uh, uh, we focus on, on Amazon. That's our training. And, and this is why uh, uh, sellers on Amazon, they come to us because they know that our VAs, they're trained on Amazon. So first of all, decide what's your focus, where what is the the important uh, you know uh, uh, aspect that you're looking for in your VA? Uh, uh, after that, there's I'm not sure I, I, if I if I want to talk about like if if it should be our company or a different company. It's more about uh, uh, if you want to do things yourself without hiring you know uh, 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 using a, a service, then you should know the things are are uh, uh, you need to have the patience. Uh, when when going to a company, there is the advantage. I can say about their, uh, ourselves that if I have to think of uh, what we've created uh, that's worth uh, is is really the fact that the VAs they have a home uh, in which it's very difficult for a single seller to provide them when working, you know, outside mm -hmm. uh, the Philippines. Uh, I can see the the, the amount of uh, support. That you know, the, the team of VAs, the colleagues they give to each other, uh, uh, you know, the meetups that they have in the Philippines when they meet together and and you know have dinners and 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 we uh, we create an uh, environment for them to develop and to keep uh, uh, training and and to be a part of something. Uh, and then if there is a problem, uh, you know, a, a typhoon is the 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 the, the most. Uh, a recent example that I can think of, but you know it happens all the time that you know uh, that we can help them as a company and and we can send people to their houses and and help them and 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 that's something that uh, you would want to see from uh, from a company. That's an advantage that uh, you would want to make sure that that's happening. Otherwise, uh, uh, the difference is not that big. The, the fact that uh, I think uh, I see that we can support our VAs and they really know that this is their home makes them stay with us for years. Because they they do not look as elsewhere. They they know that they found a place in which takes care of of their uh, 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 supports them, their families, uh, keeps training them so they continue to develop, uh, and uh, and uh, and and it gives them the 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 motivation to give their hundred and ten percent to you as a seller. Uh, that's what you should be looking for, I think. If I have to think of of why do people come to us? Awesome. Awesome. Well, if somebody did want to come to you and wanted to learn more, where would they go? Well, you can visit our website at uh, vaphilippines.com and uh, and uh, you could see that we're an Amazon-focused company. We uh, train virtual assistants. We filter and then we train virtual assistants specifically on Amazon, PPC, social media, and, uh, and Seller Central. Uh, you could also write to us directly at uh, support at vaphilippines.com or service at vaphilippines.com. Uh, and uh, uh, and uh, we'll be happy to schedule a meeting and, and talk and give you more details. Awesome. And uh, I, 
I did recently hire a VA through you. Uh, she's <laughs> yeah. on her first week as we're recording this. So um, I guess I'll have to report back later on. But so far, the process has seemed pretty organized. So I just want to give you guys a shout out for that. And so, yeah, because uh, I impressed so far and she seems to be doing a good job. So uh, hopefully, ho hopefully that continues, but I'm, it, it's promising that that's the case. So uh, well, happy to hear. And don't be surprised if next week, uh, uh, you know, the manager will reach out to you and ask if everything is going okay, because you know, oh, okay, it's a, nice. a little tip that, you know, a little secret, that's, that's uh, the procedure. <laughs> nice, we have nice, an nice. SOP. We have an mm -hmm. SOP of checking that everything is going well. Uh, so okay. uh, uh, yeah, be surprised. Uh, next weekend uh, but it, it is really to see that uh, uh everything is working well the way it should awesome well this is a good conversation and i definitely recommend folks go at least check out and your website and if they you know want to do it on their own do it on your own but challenge yourself with the tasks you're doing do you need to be doing all of them and you don't necessarily even have to f hire a full-time va it could be part-time you just do something to get started because you probably want to take something off of your plate at some point so you know if it's hiring vaa or doing it yourself i've gone both directions and so um you know uh, so definitely worth checking out so thanks so much Shalad. thank you for having me and uh, have a great uh, uh, evening thanks